in this pub coder review, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about this app. If you have any questions, please comment them below and I'll also leave a discounted link so you can always get your money's worth for pub coder. Pub coder lets you easily create interactive content for all digital platforms. So the first thing you need to do is download and install pub coder. So I'm using a Mac, so I've downloaded it for the Mac. And once that's installed, we can open it up on our desktop. So once you go on to PubCoder, you've got a few different options. You've got new project, start from an InDesign file, start from a PDF file, and start with some images. You can also open up an existing project as well. I'm just going to go ahead and go for new project. You can then set your title and the author as well, which obviously be your name. Then you can choose the page size. So we've also got some templates here. So we've got iPhone 8 Plus, iPhone 8, 12 Pro Max, XR 11 or 11 Pro Max, 12, 13, XS, a MacBook Pro, Surface Pro, Full HD 1920 by 1080. We could also do a skyscraper banner. We've got loads of different ones to choose from there. I'm going to go ahead first and go for the iPhone 12 Pro Max slash 13 Pro Max. You can then choose your orientation, so if you wanted it portrait or landscape. I'm going to leave this at portrait and then choose your localization. So I'm going to leave this as English. Go ahead and go and continue. And this will then take us over to this page here. So in this design area, it will completely depend on what you're looking to create. This can be interactive content of any sort. I did think, to be honest, that I chose this as portrait, but maybe I chose landscape which isn't a worry at all. I'm just going to sort of play around with all the different features today and not make anything specific. So we first got image. We could drag that in. And then we can either drag an image into there or click on it. We can import an image from our disk or from the internet. And our image will show there. So I can drag that image in. Delete that one. Move that to where I want to move it. Make it a little bit bigger. And then you can also double click on the image. We can choose from assets library, import from disk, import from the internet. We could crop the image, open in an external editor. We've also got a more button where we can also preview it, save image as, show an assets library, or unlink the image. Next to image, we also have text. So we could drag in text, breaking bad, because that's where the image is from. We've then got an array of options at the top. So you could choose if it's a paragraph, a header. Header 2, which is a little bit smaller. I'm going to leave it as header 1. You can manage the style, so you can manage the CSS style. You can choose the CSS fonts. So we could go for Arial, Helvetica, and Sans Serif. We can set the size. We could set the color. So we could make that whatever color we want. Make it bold, italic, underline, mark through stripe through. We could set the alignment, do bullet points, attach an image, a link a table, and more. We've also got some settings such as format, indentation, writing direction, insert read aloud splitter, insert page number, page count, edit anchor, horizontal line, non-breaking space, find and replace, and show character map. Below text, we also have button. So you could drag in a specific button. Again, we've then got options such as the alignment, where you want it to sit. Now, on the right-hand side as well, you might have noticed this section, which is the interactivity. So at the moment for this button, it's set to tap. It would depend on what you're wanting to use it for. It could be drag, load, pinch open. But for this one, I'm going to go for tap. And then as we see there, we've got add new action. So if I click onto there, We've then got loads of options there. We've got hide object, move object, play animation, rotate object. We could repeat actions, play certain audio, pause or play a soundtrack, play a video. We have layout options, layer options, counter, browsing, and widgets. So just for the sake of this, I'm going to go for scale object. We can set the scale there. So I could go three by five. The duration, its acceleration, the target absolute or delta, and set its origin. And you could also add multiple actions there. So after it scales in, it could then rotate. So you could 
rotate it so it goes like that afterwards. It's completely up to you here. You can obviously do this as well with the picture. So the picture, if you tapped on it, you could add an action. This would completely depend. On the right hand side as well, next to interactivity, we also have selection. So you can set its position and behavior, such as all formats, its axis, its rotation, its appearance. So if you wanted some opacity or if it had a specific effect, for example, it could fade in. You could set the button options, such as the font. We could set the color, it could go blue. And the background color could be a dark blue. You can also have a border. You can set the border width and the corner radius as well. Next to selection, we also have page, which has appearance and behavior, audio and advanced. And then next to there, we've got our project. So this is all the details about the project itself. We've got its metadata, its writing mode, the appearance, app menu, text and colors, read aloud, soundtrack, and advanced. Side button, we've also got audio, where we could drag that in and have some audio playing. This would also be the same with video. We also have animation as well. So we could drag that in, where you could click on here, add frames, and create your own animation. We also have a rectangle tool. If you could drag that in, create a rectangle. Same with Eclipse, where we could create an Eclipse. To get it center, you just have to hover it to what you think, and when it has that cross, that will show that it's center. Again, we've got the same options there, where we could change the color, set a border color, border width, change the appearance, or set the interactivity if you wanted this to work similar to a button. Below there, we also have widgets, where we've got masked image, pan image, image gallery, quiz, coloring game, or memory game. So say if I wanted to do this on the next page, if we just go on page number two, I could add in, for example, the coloring game. If we click on that, we can edit it. Now I'm not 100% sure what the coloring game is, but you do have the option of adding different colors or removing them. So that could be there, we could make that big. And then say if on the next page, we wanted a quiz to display, then we could drag that on there, click to edit, then we could click on the plus to add a question. And then we could add answers, and then we could resize that as well. And we've again got loads of different options where we can set the color, you could set the questions color and the answers color. Below widgets, we also have controllers. So we have action list, interactive area, smart object, and counter. So if we dragged in an interactive area, as always, click on that, we set the name, and you can use the interactive panel to define behavior of this area. So we would go over to the interactive section, click on whatever we want, add new, play an audio file, and then below there, we've got the audio file, so we could select it from assets library or import it from our computer. Next to objects, we have assets. Now, at the moment, we've only uploaded one of our own assets, and that was the Breaking Bad picture. The more you uploaded, they would all display here. And then we also have layers, where we can see our layers for each page. So as you can see, that's the first page. You can choose to show or not show layers. And then, as I mentioned earlier, on the right hand side, we have project, page, selection, and interactivity. Now we also have the option of previewing this. We have quick preview page, quick preview project. You can also send the project preview to a browser like Google Chrome or Safari. So if I sent it to Google Chrome, it's going to render the image, continue anyway, it's not got our audio file. And as we can see, we're now in Chrome and this is our page. So if we press onto the square, you see it's scaled all the way up and rotated just as we asked. If we then go on the next page, we've then got our coloring game where we can choose the colors we want. We can erase, we can set the scale. And if you remember earlier, when we went onto it, we could actually select the colors or take them away. So you could set this, all the colors you wanted to use. And if we go on the next page, we've got our quiz. What is your favorite color, blue, green, or other? And if we go next, that was our final blank page. So as you can see, this is just an example to sort of see 
what different things you can do, but the possibilities really are endless with this. There is also project settings where you've got XPub, EPUB3, an iOS app, if you wanted it to be for an iPhone or an Android app, HTML5, KF8, page formats, and the localization. And if you wanted to export the project to code, then you could export it to CSS, JavaScript, HTML head, or just the page cover of CSS, JavaScript, or HTML. Once you're happy, you can save your page, and you could come back to it another time, or you could export this. This is just a short example today, but as you can see, there's loads of customization features. And that's everything I'm going to go through today. So what did I think of PubCoder? Well, PubCoder was a fantastic interactive content creator. There was a whole array of different possibilities from creating iOS apps to interactive web pages. It was a little bit daunting at first, but you quickly get the hang of it. There were so many different possibilities for what you can create, and I really enjoyed using PubCoder. Overall, I would definitely recommend. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.